It is so great to have you guys join us today for another My Expert Live Training webinar. My name is Jared, uh, and I'm really excited about what we're gonna show you today. It's not very often that we get to show you guys brand new products and how to use them, uh, but we do. We have some brand new products today, and I'm gonna show you how to customize them from start to finish. So today I'm gonna show you how to do, check it out, we're showing you how to make these can coolers. These are super cool. And uh, let's see right here. Yeah, so it's these cooler sleeves. Actually, if you want to see, we have three of these uh, blanks here today. I already printed them out, but I am gonna show you everything, the print process included. So today, you see this one, we're doing this cool uh, zip up bottle. And then this, this I, I made a, a wrong, so this is the skinny boy. This is for like your LaCroix, or what is this? I think this is like V8 or something like that. So this will fit your LaCroix. However, the, the, the sample that I'm doing today is more for like the tall boys, uh, like the monster energy drinks that size. So anyways, let's hop right to it. Um, we're gonna show you a couple things. Right here, you can see we have sublimation can cooler sleeves. So we're gonna click on this and it's gonna take us to all of our sublimation uh, can coolers by Sublacraft. Sublacraft is a heat press nation brand. Um, so you know it's gonna be top quality and a great price. Um, so I've already downloaded all the templates, but if you wanna see how to download a template, just go to the item that you're gonna be using. For instance, if you want the template for this uh, zipper one, we're gonna click on it. It's gonna give us all the information, the price, these do ship free within the lower 48. Hide that. There we go, it's gonna give you like a rundown of what it is, what it fits. This sleeve works well with 12 ounce long neck bottles used by many, basically your average like soda or uh, beer bottle. Uh, right here, download template. This is what you're going to want to use. You click download template and it's gonna take you to this file. This is a PDF. And depending on your browser, you can probably like right click it. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome. So I'm just gonna click the download button. Uh, you could rename it whatever you want. Uh, I just, that, that's the, the default name. Uh, and then you click save and it's gonna save it. See, really quick, it's not a huge file. So that's it, it's that easy to get a hold of your template. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Adobe Photoshop. Now I already have my templates and actually I need to open one more. So we're gonna go to file, open. Now I'm gonna kind of, and this is the zipper template. I'm gonna kind of, I don't wanna say speed through things. And I'm gonna show you how to edit it. So over here, we're gonna go to our layers and yeah. Now here's the easy way to do this. Now, this template, you can hide it, right? And if you open it up, it's even more, you can hide the text if you want to. Um, you can just hide the whole darn thing, really. Now, I don't need this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this part a little larger because I'm really gonna make uh, put my layers to work, my template layers. So I'm gonna leave the template open. The bleed layer. Now there's two ways to do this. Okay, so here's my here's my folder, right? Let's make this window a little smaller. Can Cooler Webinars has all my files, right? So the graphics, these are what I'm going to put. And then I believe for my zippered cooler, I'm gonna use the America Liberty Etc. file. Now, what I do is I just like drag it in to Photoshop. It's it's like really easy. So it sometimes takes a second. There we go. So I'm gonna drag it in and I'm not gonna resize it just yet. I'm just gonna check this. I'm going too fast for you right now. Uh, feel free to slow it down and pause it. Anyways, I've imported my artwork. Now, here's what I'll usually do. I'll usually duplicate this layer, right? Bleed copy, and then I'll pull it out of the group. So I don't want it in the group. I'll pull it out of the group. I'll also pull my artwork out of the group. There we go. And so now I can hide the group all I'm left with is my artwork, which is this layer right here, and the bleed layer. You need your artwork to completely cover the bleed layer. I think I sized it just right, um, but what I do wanna do is have it just a little bit bigger. So now here's what, now here's what you wanna do. You wanna lose your, you wanna create a clipping mask, right there, create clipping mask, so have your artwork layer right above the bleed copy. 
and use it as a clipping mask. You're going to create a clipping mask. And so now the artwork will only cover this. And you're good to go. Now, if you want to squeeze two on here, like once you're settled on your artwork, you have it positioned, it's good to go. Um, what I do is I'll just, and you can hit control, click to select both. And then I will either merge layers, or I think you can just hit, oh, there it is, merge layers, right? So now these are one layer. And now what I could do is I could just squeeze two of these onto my uh, thing, right? You can either hit duplicate layer over here, or if you want a shortcut, you can hit Alt, you can hold the Alt key, and then just drag and create a new duplicate. There we go. And these will both fit just perfectly. And so now I can have two of these. I can print both the front and the back at one time. And let's just see how that looks. So we're gonna hit, we're gonna go to print. You can hit Control P or you can go to file and print. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna send it to straight to the Sawgrass SG500. We are gonna send it to Sawgrass Print Manager. And that's because Sawgrass Print Manager is going to manage our print. It's gonna uh, it's going to make sure that uh, all the colors are optimized. So I'm going to, again, you're not going to send it to your Sawgrass directly, even though it's listed. You're going to send it to Sawgrass Print Manager. Oh, it popped up on my other screen. Here we go. Yeah, so I have my SG500 listed. For material, the outers, the outside layer of these cooler sleeves, uh, the outside layer is made of polyester. So polyester, paper. Uh, I'm using text print XPHR, but I don't see it listed. So I'm just going to put text print R. Honestly, it's like, there's not really a difference when it comes to like the print output. Now, if you do want these, when I, whenever I'm doing graphics like this I, and I really want the colors to pop, I'll switch it from photographic to vivid mode. Now, I don't know if you can see the difference on screen, but the difference is ever so gentle, but it does increase the vividness of the colors. So I'll usually go to the color tab, change it to vivid. Um, if it looks good on the preview, then I don't really mess with it, unless I want to make copies, like multiple prints. Uh, I don't really mess with the jobs, the lay, like I don't really mess with any of this other stuff. I'll make sure my material is correct, and I'll change my color mode to vivid uh, for a graphic like this. And then I'll hit print. And I'm going to turn my camera back on. Now, here's what you don't see. I have a Sawgrass SG500 right here. I think you can hear it. I'm going to put my mic to it so you can hear it. That's the sound of printing, all right? <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's and it's coming out right now. Now, even though I already have my other prints ready to go, uh, I just did want to show you the process in real time so you could know exactly what to expect when you make these for yourself. So it's printing. I have it at high quality. The printer could go faster, but then there's a slight sacrifice of quality, and I'm not into that. I'll wait, what is it, like 60 seconds uh, for this thing to print, and that's what we're doing right now. It's almost done. And yeah, we're, I'm, I'm, it's a little warm in here, so I'm getting ready to crack open one of these uh, sodas. So, so here we go. Fresh, 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 fresh. But of course, we already have this. Now, there is one more trick that I did want to show you. Okay, and we're going to do this on uh, one of the tall boys. So we're going to get our bleed layer. And again, you hold the, oh, you can do this over on the layers tab. I'm going to hold the Alt key and I'm going to just drag. A new duplicate layer, right? I'm gonna pull it out and I'm going to hide my template. I'm gonna hide the info. You don't want to print with the, you want to hide these layers before you send to print because this is just gonna waste ink. You're not gonna sublimate this info, so just hide it. You can even delete the layer if you like. Uh, the template is good because it will kind of give you an idea, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. So here's the trick. So you have your bleed copy, right? What usually what I'll do is you're going to look at the properties of this. There it is. So this is 1263 by 2208. So what I'll do, and this is just for you Photoshop pros, I'm going to make a new square. And I'm going to make it 1263. Oh, yeah. And I want it, what was it, 2208? I think so. Nope. Oh, yeah. Basically, what's happening is I'm sizing this to be the exact same size as the bleed template, right? 
And here's, and here's why one would even do that. I'm going to convert this to a smart object now. And then, of course, I'm going to create the clipping mask, right? But now this smart object, if I wanted to, yes. So now with this smart object, I could set up my, forgive me, this brand new computer. I could set up my rulers, my guides, um, all that stuff. So if I wanted to bring in my American flag, there we go. So now I could resize this. Let's keep that. Let's lock the proportions. So now I could resize this to be however I want. But if I also wanted to add some text, um, I would probably do it in here. It's just so much easier to handle the graphic in here. Um, we could really put whatever we want. America, and then of course, um, we're gonna change our font. I don't have a lot of fonts on this computer. Um, that seems good. So, you know, you could edit your graphic, and I don't wanna spend too much time here, but you know, you could edit your graphic. If your graphic has multiple uh, elements to it, you know, you can do this. You can really do whatever you want. Save it, Control S, or just go to File, Save. Oh no, see, so yeah, I just saved it, so it's not gonna let me. And now we close this, and now it just fills this in. So it's just an extra way. It's kind of a longer way of doing things, but um, you know, if you have multiple graphics, you could just group these together. I don't need this anymore. So you know, you could just group these. If you're, you know, that way you could just keep your template organized. Uh, graphic one, and then now I can hide this, create a new group that's gonna be graphic two. So if it's something that you're printing a lot of, you can just have it ready to roll. You know, you just edit the template or whatever. Anyways, just a little tip. But now we're gonna actually show you guys how to print. So that was the, obviously when you do it, it's not gonna take as long. Um, I'm just taking long because I'm talking to you guys through it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our overhead cam and I'm going to show you guys how to prep these. So I'm going to show you how to press the hardest one, which is going to be this one. Um, these, the process for these is going to be basically the same. So uh, we're going to do the tall boy. Why not? Okay. So what I'm going to do first is you don't, you can't really press both sides at once. You're going to have to do it one side at a time. Uh, so as you can see there, I'm just going to cut it move these out of the way there you go you guys can still look at them and one thing you'll notice is that the print area it's a little bit bigger than the actual you know a little bit is going to stick out it's a little bit bigger and i might not have sized this right the the template on the website will be updated uh, but anyways it's a little bit bigger than the actual piece and that's what we call bleed it's to make sure that you get a full edge to edge uh print there we go. Once it's in place, you're going to get your heat tape, which I hope yeah, you guys can see that. You don't need a ton. Uh, you could just kind of, I'll do it. No, it's not going to work long ways. Here. I use too much. You just really tape the bottom. Tape the top. And you're good to go. And I'm also going to do the zipper one. Then we're going to walk over to the heat press and show you how that works. Again, you see the print is a little bit bigger than the item, and that is intentional. And this one, I'm going to tape it on this side. It doesn't totally matter where you tape it on. The reason why we tape things is because we don't want this to shift. We don't want the paper to move. So after we heat press it, uh, again, because sublimation, it's, ga it's a gas dye. And so we don't want the paper to shift on the surface of this substrate of the blank. Um, because if it did, then it could re-imprint it. And basically, the name of the game is you want to keep this very, very still. OK, so we have these over. I'm going to take these over to the heat press. So again, Craft Pro, this is set to, um, actually, I got to double check, 385. 60 seconds. So really quick here. 
I think I overshot. Yeah, I set it to 400. Okay. So just like that, 385, we're going to go down to 60 seconds. Honestly, you probably could press them at 400, like, but I just like to go a little lower. Then give that a second. Well, that should cool down by the time we're done. Now, if you're pressing pretty much any other one of these blanks, you don't need the pressing pillow. However, if you're pressing the zippered cooler, you will need a pillow because when you press it, we need plates. So this zipper, it's kind of thick, especially this part right here, the actual zipper mechanism. Uh, that's pretty thick. And so what the pillow does is it allows that to sink in so the area around it can get an actual decent press. Um, so you don't, again, you don't need the pillow if you're pressing regular items like this work just fine. In fact, I'll probably, what I'll do is I'll press this one without the pillow, uh, and then I'll show you how to press this one with the pillow so we can get the full experience. Okay, so now to prep your, to prep your area, you're going to get a piece of parchment paper, and you're just going to lay it on the bottom. It's going to protect your lower platen from any sublimation dice uh, from getting on there. Anytime I'm sublimating, I'm always protecting my heat press with uh, usually it's two pieces of parchment paper. We're going to place that right on the center. And then so I don't get any sublimation dye on my heat press. Going to get another piece and sandwich it like that. You might be asking, hey, is that a waste of parchment paper? Uh, no, it's not as I mean, you don't want to get any of the ink on your heat press. That's for sure. And so while it's adjusting, what I am going to do is I'm going to adjust for pressure. The pressure was adjusted for the pillow, um, so it's going to be very, very loose. It's not even going to really affect this. So I'm going to tighten it in small increments. It's actually decent. I'm going to go just a little bit. Um, tighten it in small increments until I get to where I need to be. Now, you don't need a lot of pressure for this blank. These, In fact, you don't, you don't want to use firm pressure because you don't want to squish out uh, the material. You, they need to be a little fluffy still. I don't I can't think of a better word. But what you don't want to do is squish the material um, because then it'll it, what, what it does is what we found out is if you use too much pressure, it's actually going to make it be a little tight for your cans and stuff. So you don't need too much pressure, just medium. We'll do fine. We're at 388. That's close enough. I'm going to go ahead and press this now for 60 seconds. Medium, medium light pressure. And uh, yeah, so one thing, I'll take this moment because we have like, you know, a whole minute, right? And you know me, I can't really deal with the uh, the dead time. So yeah, I'll take this moment to say, I really like these can coolers. Like they really make the holiday parties like super, super fun. You can customize them individually or you could just print up a ton and have like, you know, have them all say the same thing. You know, if you're having a smaller party, like a bachelorette or a bachelor party, you know, what's really cool is you can give each person their own cooler, their own can cooler or bottle cooler or whatever. And that does two things. It keeps people from mixing drinks, which, you know, we're all trying to stay safe still. And it's just like a cool keepsake. They can have it. They'll remember your party. It's really cool. Uh, as you probably saw on the screen for these, um, for the zippered ones, it's like $24 for a 10 pack. So there we go. These do ship free within the lower 48. There we go. I'm going to give it a second to cool down. I'm not going to peel it immediately. Pull this out of the way. Now, you probably can't see it on camera. There is a extremely faint imprint of the ink on here. And honestly, I just don't want that on my heat press. I really don't. I don't we'll see right now if anything got on this. But anyways, I'm going to give it just a second to cool down. I, I almost never, I should say, I never really peel these hot. And I'm just going to... Just give it a little band-aid, just a little. So I flip this over. Dude, that is cool. That is cool. Now, this is meant to be like have a darker, the original graphic, if you saw it on screen, oh, there's a little white spot there. Oh well. Uh, the original graphic on screen, it was kind of like a vintage metal, kind of like someone painted the American flag on the side of like a battle-worn 
you know, airplane from World War II or something like that, even though there wouldn't have been 50 stars. Anyways, that's besides the point, guys. But yeah, it's a really cool, has a cool vintage look. So it's a, actually supposed to be this dark. Don't worry, we're going to get some bright colors on the other one. But yeah, and then if you want to do the, when you're ready to do the other side, you just repeat it. You, I would just go back to the other table and uh, yeah, put the graphic on this side and bring it back over here. So that's really, really cool. And yeah, this one's done. I'm just going to put this down over here for you to admire. Uh, now here's what you can do. Because there's some sublimation ink on here, I don't want that staining the clean side of my next one. So this one is trash, but I think we're going to tag in. I'm going to tag my man. Oh no, this one still has some stuff on it too. Yep, we don't want that. So those are done. If you want to be a little more conservative with your parchment paper, that's fine. We sell these gigantic rolls at a pretty good price. So like, oh no, no, we're going to get the pill. Yeah, we sell these gigantic rolls at a pretty good price. So I'm actually okay with just using a bunch of it. You very likely will need to use a new piece for every transfer. Okay. I'm bringing the pillow in here and I'm going to, I can already tell you, I know I'm going to have to loosen the pressure a bunch. Like that's like, it's not going to go down. So I'm going to loosen my pressure. And what I'll usually do is I'll, I'll loosen it a lot. See, that wasn't enough still. What I'll do is I'll loosen it a lot. So it's over. It's okay. Now it's way too loose. And I'll come back in small increments. There we go. We're getting closer, getting closer. One more and I think we should do it. There we go. Of course, you want to give this a second to rebound after, ah, top. after every press, this is going to get squished a little bit, but that's okay. What you don't ever want to do is squish this all the way down um, because you could permanently damage the uh, foam inside, the heat foam. So what you're going to want is just Right, that's where it is. Just a very gentle pressure. You only want to compress it about 30% or so, maybe up to 50 if you're really, you're really crazy. I am going to cover this because I don't, I don't want to really stain that with anything. And here's the thing. I now in the video, what we did was we lowered this and tucked it inside. Me personally, and it really just depends on your method. You can do whatever you want. Uh, me personally, I like leaving it hanging out. So I'm going to leave it hanging out, have it on my pillow, cover it with another piece, and we got 385 degrees, 60 seconds on the clock, and there we go. Time is up. Gonna swing that away. Got a little bubbly here. That might be from, I don't know. I'm gonna let that chill for a second. We're just gonna let it cool for a second. And then we're just gonna go ahead and peel. That was an easy peel. Dude, yeah, I got a little, little hot. Oh, that zipper is hot, but check that out. I think I can handle it. Yeah, okay, I just won't touch the zipper. Check that out, fam. Super bright, super cool colors. This is a USA pattern, um, of course, that I downloaded from Shutterstock. I'm not that great of a designer. And yeah, this is really cool. And then to repeat it, uh, I would just tape it to the other side and then just do it all over again. In fact, I feel like we should have, we should have at least one complete. So I'm gonna show you guys really quick. Let me switch the camera. Okay. So here we go. This is a little warm. You can choose to let it cool off if you want to. Um, it's not that bad. I think it'll be okay. Um, so yeah, so here's what we would do. Now this might be, is it? Oh, not that bad. Okay, cool. That cooled off pretty quick. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to position it right in the center uh, where I had the other, right? We're just going to center it. By the time this airs, I'm going to update the template to have just a little bit more bleed. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, we'll, we'll have adjusted the template. Anyway, so I'm going to tape that in place, and that's done. Pretty simple, right? I love it. Oh, I taped it to the table. 
So now there's not a lot of bleed and actually this will fit in the exact same space. So I will reuse my parchment here. That should be okay. And let's see, I didn't get a lot of bleed on this one. So I think I'm actually gonna reuse this one. How cool. Okay, 385 degrees, 60 seconds on the clock. We're using the pressing pillow and we have about a medium to medium light pressure. You don't wanna go too light on the zippered one because we do need a, you know enough pressure to where there's some little nooks and crannies, which you'll probably see right now. There's some nooks and crannies near the zipper uh, that we do want the ink to kind of get pressed into. So 4th of July is right around the corner. And honestly, if, cut me off. <laughs> honestly, like you definitely want to get, I would order, um, because they come in a pack of 10, I would order a pack of these, take some pictures, post them on your social media, and let your friends know that for their 4th of July, parties or whatever, because everything's opening up, thank God. Um, let them know that, hey, if you want custom, uh, you know, bottle coolers, can coolers, we have a ton of stuff, check out the website. But if they want anything custom for their parties, hit you up. So yeah, it, it, one thing I've noticed is like having samples to give to my friends or to post on social media, that's like the key to word of mouth uh, marketing. So we let that cool for a second. I'm just gonna kind of peel it off. And that looks dope. Oh, there we go. And because I had good, good, you know, good pressure, those little nooks and crannies that I was telling you about, they got filled in. Now, if this, ooh, it's a little warm. No worries, I'm tough. So there, what I'm talking, there's a little seam right here where they sewed in the zipper. It's 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 light. That is hot. Okay, it's light. So, you know, if this was a very very dark. Um, transfer, like if I had done this transfer, it might be a little bit more noticeable. There's almost, I don't want to say there's no possible way, but this seam is just the name of the game for this bottle, for this bottle cooler. Um, if you have some, if you have a really, really dark transfer, it'll be a little more noticeable because this is a, a light transfer. You know, it's light colored, has a white background. The graphic is light, the image is light. It's not that noticeable. So maybe for these transfers, keep it a little bit lighter uh, and you won't notice that seam, but that seam, that's kind of a part of it. That's the name of the game. So yeah, is this, that zipper actually cools off pretty quick. So yeah, you just pop your bottle in there, keep it nice and cool and super stylish. So there we go. I'm gonna bring this over to the main camera. So check it out. This is the can cooler we just made. USA, we have like, I think we have what, like the Golden Gate Bridge, we have hot dogs. We have the Statue of Liberty, we have the Capitol building and a bunch of other really cool references to America. Now this is very snug. So, and once it comes like, if it's fresh out of the, out of the, out of the heat press, you know, it's gonna be even more snug. So you kind of just like put it in the mouth and just like a shark is just gonna eat your, your thing. So you might have to stretch it a bit at first, but yeah, very snug. The zipper just kind of pulls up and there we go. And this is also why you don't want to over smash your, see, so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like pulling it around. There we go. Zipped up. But yeah, check this out. Super cool. It's going to keep my drink cool. Uh, great insulator, great fun, super cool for your party. And yeah, these are a huge, going to be a huge hit. I guarantee it. Um, we got the skinny tall boys. We have some of these. These are great for your Etsy shop. Uh, they're great for summer is a state of mind. Oh, is that, a, it's not in focus. Oh, well. Anyways, it's that easy. Now, obviously I took a, I took a while today. I'm talking through the process, but honestly, start to finish from downloading the template to bring it in my artwork. Now I'm not going to count design time because it's warm in here because different designs uh, take a different amount of time, you know, some design. So not counting design time, but just if you already have your design ready to go, dropping it into the template, printing, prepping, pressing. You could honestly get one of these done in three to five minutes, no exaggeration. If you have your artwork already to go, you could cut down the time per press a ton. If you, like, let's say you wanted to make I need to make 50 of these for my big summer 4th of July bash. You just print out 50. It takes about a minute 
or less, depending on you know the graphic um, to print. But as they're printing, you could start pressing. So honestly, like without exaggerating, 50 of these done in less than an hour. Well, actually, I would say about an hour because it takes each one takes 60 seconds on the press. So once they start printing, you're over there, you're prepping, you're pressing. And then while these are pressing, while one's pressing, you're prepping the next one. So, you know, you're not taking three minutes per can. It'll average out to about a minute and a half, two minutes per cooler. Anyways, uh, I had a blast today. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this edition of our My Expert live web live training webinars. Uh, this is, yeah, this is how you do it. Check out all these cool, these can coolers, uh, super dope. For more information, you can go to heatpressnation.com and I'm gonna show you that. And right here, Sublimation Can Cooler Sleeves, you can go to Sublimation Blanks as, as well and just click Can Cooler and Drink Cooler Sleeves. And look, we have a bunch of them. Each of them does come with a template. This one is a cool one. All right, I know we're gonna be selling out of these uh, come the Super Bowl and championships. These ones, it says t-shirt, but honestly, it looks so cool. Oh, jersey. Oh, it does say jersey. These are incredible. I absolutely love them. And uh, they're huge. Can be huge. Look, a 10-pack for 16 bucks. They ship for free. So you're just paying 16 plus tax. All right. That means that each blank is costing you a buck 60. If you want to factor in tax, you're probably paying what a buck 75. And you could easily, oh my gosh, without a problem sell them for minimum if let's say you're making a bunch for your own brand it has or you're just saying hey plain american flag jersey coolers five six bucks a pop no problem ten bucks no problem if you're making customs for a party you could easily charge between five and ten dollars profit margins on these are dope highly encourage you guys uh, getting into these uh so if you don't want to see this whole tutorial again uh this video is what like five minutes it's going to show you, I don't think it's going to show you, I don't know if it shows the, oh, it does. Not in that much detail, but it'll give you an abbreviated version of this all the way through. Check this out. So cool. I hope you guys have an absolute blast today. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. That's going to do it from me here at Heat Press Nation. I thank you guys once again for joining me, and I hope you have a fabulous Memorial Day weekend. We'll see you all.